G'day, I'm back in Perth where I'm in lockdown in a Perth hotel, but I still want to tell you about what the drivers drove to two races, the last two of the year, Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi, in eight seconds time. These last two races threw up a variety of vehicles driven by the F1 drivers and some of the team principals. And first up, let's go through the Mercedes drivers. We had Valtteri Bottas coming in in this blue-gray Mercedes GLE 450. On one or two days, the other days, he rode his bicycle to the track. His teammate, Lewis Hamilton, was driving a GLE 53 AMG version. I should say that there are four holes in this video, and here's one of them. I can't tell you what Max drove to the track. I can tell you what his teammate drove, Sergio Perez, in a Dodge. An unusual choice, I thought. Oh, and at this point, let me remind you that Surfshark is a browser and an app that allows you to position your devices anywhere in the world. That allows you and me to use the internet as if I was in that particular country. And I've needed that over the last few races in the Middle East. But there's another advantage. If I happen to log into, say, Netherlands on Surfshark, I can see all the Netflix content from that country. And that opens up a whole new range of content. If you're looking for a VPN, click on the link in the description and use the promo code KIM and you'll get 83% off plus four months free. 83% off and four months free with the promo code KIM. And there's a money back guarantee. Thank you, Surfshark. <laughs> Next up, Daniel Ricciardo driving a Toyota Prado, a monster four-wheel drive so popular in these Middle East countries and also here in Australia where I am and it's hot. And I know you're thinking, why is he wearing a scarf? Well, I've gone out in sympathy with my uh, viewers in the Northern Hemisphere where in many countries it is cold, very cold. Let's get on to Daniel's teammate, Lando Norris. He was driving what I thought was the standout vehicle of the race and maybe even the year, could well be the most expensive. This is a Brabus G700. It's effectively a Mercedes AMG G63 G-Wagon that's been specced up to the max by a German company that works out of the Ruhr area. Its power has been boosted by about 20%. The interior is refitted. It looks very special. And I'm not sure where Lando got hold of this vehicle, but it retails for well over half a million US dollars. I'm not sure that they're too easy to come by, and when I first laid my eyes on it, it just got my attention instantly. And that's why it's definitely going to be included in my top five cars when I do my best of 2021 video coming up before the new year. Moving on now to the Alpine drivers. Both of these gentlemen, Fernando and Esteban, were driving Renault Colios's. Nothing too special about those vehicles, but there is always a level of interest in what the Ferrari drivers drove. Did they drive Ferraris? Not this time. Instead, they were in Maserati Levante Q4s, both of them, different colours, but exactly the same car. And I'll get around to what Mattia was driving uh, a little bit later in this video. The Aston Martin drivers, Seb and Lance, well, Lance, as usual, was driving the DBX, while Seb was driving the DBS sports car. And he has driven that pretty much to all races this year when they've been driving Aston Martins. The Alpha Tauri drivers, Pierre and Yuki, were they driving the same car? No. And strangely enough, Yuki Tsunoda was driving a Nissan Altima, while Pierre Gasly was driving a Honda Accord. And of course, the Alpha Tauri car has a Honda engine in it. The Alfa Romeo drivers were both driving Alfa Romeos. Predictably, Antonio Giovinazzi was driving a Giulia, a white Veloce, and his teammate, Kimi Raikkonen, in his last ever race, was also driving an Alfa Romeo. I did not see it, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it was a Stelvio, based on his past choice. Four more drivers to go for Abu Dhabi. Let's go to the Williams drivers with Nicholas Latifi and George Russell, both driving Mercedes E300s, different colours. Mick Schumacher ended up in an Alfa Romeo. He was driving a Stelvio Q4. And Nikita Mazepin, well, I went out on Sunday to have a look at the car park because luckily for us, the car park is right next to the paddock. So I did a quick run through of all of the cars and there was an empty bay where Nikita was. And this was Sunday morning, a few hours before the race. And I thought, what's going on there? That's a bit late to be leaving it. And then I had a look at my phone and Nikita had come down with COVID. So I can't tell you what he drove on the first three days. And on the fourth day, he was locked down in quarantine, getting over COVID. A quick look at some of the team principal cars. This is Toto Wolf's Mercedes GLS 450. Otmar Safna was driving something sporty this time, a DBS. 
Fred Vasseur flying the company colours in an Alfa Romeo Giulia, Andreas Seidel in a Mercedes C200, Franz Tost in a Kia K5. I had not even heard of this model car, I'll be honest with you, and coming up next you'll find another team principal was driving a K8. I'll get to that in a minute. And I'll throw in a couple of extras from Abu Dhabi, because these cars were in the car park and visible for me to see. That of Stefano Domenicali, a Nissan Patrol, and Michael Massey driving a Fortuna. That's Abu Dhabi. Now let's step it back one week prior to that, and we were in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. What did they drive there? Well, thankfully, all of the car parks had the driver's names on it, so it made it a little bit easier. Although I never saw Lewis's car once. His teammate, Valtteri Bottas was driving a black Mercedes 450 GL, oh, I'm not sure. You will know perhaps more than me, I didn't take a note of that. Max Verstappen driving a white Honda Accord and his teammate Sergio Perez was also driving an Accord. Of course, they're sponsored by Honda and have pretty much all this season driven Hondas. Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz driving the same car and that being a Jeep Grand Cherokee. The Aston Martin drivers with Sebastian Vettel and Lance Stroll once again driving the exact same type of vehicle that they drove in Abu Dhabi, a DBX and a DBS respectively. Pierre Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda driving the same cars, they were Hondas, Accords to be exact. Kimi Raikkonen driving a Toyota Land Cruiser GXR, a big vehicle perfectly at home on the sand dunes out there in those Arab countries as it is here in the back blocks of Australia where I am up at Lancelin. Not there now, I'm stuck in a hotel as I mentioned earlier, but I will be there shortly. There are four drivers left to go, let's go to the Williams drivers. Both George Russell and Nicholas Latifi were driving the exact same cars as the Alpine drivers, BMW's 730 Li's to be exact. And finally Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin driving identical vehicles here, even the same colour, the Toyota Land Cruiser. Right here, let me go through now a couple of the team principal cars. This is Gunter Steiner's car, a Kia K8. As I mentioned before, I'd never seen these cars. And the reason I haven't seen these cars is that they're not available in Australia and are unlikely to be available in Australia. And they are the first cars to sport the new Kia logo on the front. The K8 is a full-size sedan and it's impressive to look at. So I imagine Gunter Steiner was pretty happy to be rolling up and leaving the track in this particular vehicle. Mattia Bonotto, like his two drivers, was in a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Franz Tost, he was in a Honda Accord, as was Christian Horner. Christian Horner, though, had some Red Bull logos on the passenger and driver's doors. While Alpine's Laurent Rossi was driving a Chevrolet Tahoe black in colour. And during the evening, just outside the paddock, all the VIPs would roll up in the most amazing cars. There is so much money on the road in Saudi Arabia, and in particular in Jeddah. These two were standouts, a magnificent white Rolls Royce and this fantastic looking G-Wagon. I'll be bluntly honest with you, it only came to me this year because we were locked out of the paddock and I had nothing to do for a lot of the hours while the drivers were in the paddock away from our sights that I thought, hey, let's go out in the car park and let's do videos on what the drivers drive. Well, they've turned out to be some of my most popular videos here on my YouTube channel. So clearly there is an appetite for it. So I want to thank you for devouring the content. Thank you for your enthusiasm. With that said, I'm going to ask you to like the video. Go and do it now. Just press the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember, if you're a member, you get a whole host of freebies like wallpapers, raw images, special videos and the like. You'll find all of my F1 photos available for digital download at ProStarPix.com for editorial and personal use. My F1 photo books are available. You can order those at KimElman.com and they'll be sent to almost any country in the world. And you can also find a range of merchandise on my shop. And for my best images live from the track when we get back there next year, and all during the week, head to Instagram and search at Kim Elman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. <laughs> if you're wondering why I've got a scarf on, it's because I've gone out in sympathy with my friends in the Northern Hemisphere.